Today we're working on a uh, GX, I think it was a 35 if I recall, a little Honda motor off of uh, a, uh, I think it was a Manus. Um, Uh, Manus tiller. So what I've done is I've uh, removed the uh, valves and the uh, valve springs, valve keepers, and you know, you know, just take a little care and uh, making sure you mark uh, those items. What I was getting ready to do here is show you how I polish my valves. So if I can find a little room here and. Uh, What I do is I take my uh, cordless drill and, um, and the, the underside of these valves, this, this one, uh, there was no compression because it had sat outside for a long time. Moisture made its way into, uh, moisture made its way into the, uh, the exhaust uh, port and kind of snotted up the whole valve. And so basically what I'm going to do is take a little bit of a, uh, if you can see here, looks like the camera is fighting with the. So, uh, yeah, I just you know don't 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 get too meaty with it. And uh, to the top, do I at it? And it's as simple as that. So, uh, you yeah, know, I'm not sure if you can, what you can see. Uh, there's still a little goo on there, but, you know, for the most part, it feels like, feels like I've gotten rid of the, uh, snotted up rust that was on the bottom there. You know, and I, I wouldn't get, unless it's, you know, unless they're really bad, I mean, if they're really bad, you might as well just replace them. Uh, these are pretty cheap, and then... I said I just put it in the chuck, up chuck chuck. Try not to, uh, don't go too too monkey crazy on the uh, side that's on the uh, lash, because if you stamp it out too hard, then you're uh, you won't get a good seat in your. Or if you put it in the chuck too hard, you won't get a good seat in your uh, in your valve seat. Um, and you you want to try to get this as uh, smooth and as clean as possible. There's Definitely a bunch of carbon built up on this one. You can see uh, I already smoothed that out. That makes it nice and pretty. Uh, I can actually see the number on it now. This one says 15 on it. Not sure if... Uh, let me see if I... Jeez, here we go. Finally, get a fucking decent view. Yeah, the rest of our oh, here are the rest of our uh, parts here that we're cleaning up today, and uh, I'm gonna give them a nice. Uh, scrubbing and uh, oiling down. I'll use fluid film on the inside to pre-lube this and then I'll take a cloth with some uh, acetone or or uh, rubbing alcohol probably to go around the outside of the uh, where I'm going to put the RTV at. <clears throat> so we're out here we're Putting these valves back in the, uh, I think it's a GX35. So, um, you gently place them down there. Make sure that when you take them out, take them out one at a time and remember, remember what you've, you know, what you got there. What I do is, uh, anytime where I know I have parts that can fall through the bottom, I kind of pack it full of, uh, paper towels. I'm gonna go grab a couple more real quick. I'm gonna grab a set of my keepers. And my uh, valve guides, and uh, one of the uh, at least the keepers and the valve guides. 
So, uh, when you're doing this, like I said, just try to keep track of what side's what because, uh, you know, the wear will be different. The wear will be different on the intake side than it will be on the uh, exhaust side. So, and these are these are pretty easy to to compress. You don't. I know one of my videos I do like uh, zip ties and the uh, and and the uh, bigger Briggs and Stratton, like the five, the three, and the the three and the five horsepower one. Uh, I use zip ties to uh, crunch those together. And he can check out those videos. Uh, let me make sure. Let me go back and look real quick. Hang on. This was the outtake side. So out would be my exhaust. I write them out and in. You can do it however you want to do it. And uh, like I said, you know, I jammed the paper towels in the back there. And that seems to work for me for, for what I'm doing. If you're a... Uh, Good. I was. I need a professional camera operator. <clears throat> I'm not sure. Let's see. Let me put that in as far as I can. Um, so exhaust side, we're working here, and I'm going to. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's put that this way. And, Put, we can put this in, that's not a big deal. And that goes in there like that. And hopefully you can easy peasy, right? Again, as far as as far as the uh the rod itself, the lifting rod, I didn't really notice a difference in uh, either side other than uh, this one that I'm about to put in on the intake side actually had a little bit of a crook to it. They're not quite. Let's see here. Could just be an optical illusion, but it didn't quite look didn't quite look uh, straight. Could be uh, could be wear as well. Uh, so then, you know, the other thing too, probably important, you know, as far as wear goes, and uh, you know, making sure that you uh, get it back together as factory as possible is uh, keep an eye on, you know, like I even, like I, you know, I'm putting the lifter on the same side. Now, there was. There's lockers here. I'm gonna adjust these valve lashes after I get it all together. Uh, there are lockers for uh, keeping these uh, little guys in place. And there is uh, on the bottom here, come on camera. That's uh, the indentation side for, uh, there's actually no difference in these either. But there is an indentation side, and then there's a little uh, a little Allen key right on the top of those lifters, uh, so you can identify those later. Make sure I put those on right. Yep. Put the lifter rod back in or keeper. Yeah, make sure your make sure your rod and the back is definitely in there. Come on, baby. Oh, mine's not in there. Ew. I'm gonna have to get a zoom but... Good enough. And the same thing with the problem I was having here that 
I noticed, see, I picked this up from uh, my mom. This has been in the family for probably 20 years. But I, uh, I really just wanted to kind of fix this thing. Because my mom and dad used to garden. And everything that I know mechanical about my life is uh, because of my dad. So, um, what happened here was the the exhaust side uh, was, I guess, taken on water over the years. <clears throat> sitting wherever it was sitting, even though it was inside, the moisture crept in and um, rusted the exhaust side shut or open or whatever there was no compression though so that was really causing a little bit of a uh, snafu for me so um, gonna try to spin this then oh good grief before I do that though make sure you're Parts are where they need to belong, where they belong at. You can also measure the, uh, I didn't measure it before I took them apart, but you can measure, there's two little nuts that sit on the top here. And uh, I mean, you probably take a micrometer or something or mark it even with a marker. Uh, I just, I wasn't overly worried about it because I figured if I was taking it apart and rebuilding it here that, uh, not necessarily rebuilding it, but reconditioning it, um, I could deal with all that later. So I'm going to start putting our TV on it. I went through and tried to clean up these casket areas as much as possible and, uh, start moving on to the next, uh, step here. Of course, it'd be nice if you, so you can kind of see those, but there was, it was, it was filled with the water. There was water and rust coming out this side and the oil was, the oil was cranking up through the, the crankcase oil was coming up through the uh, exhaust valve side here, and I I could have tapped it and probably oh, yeah, the exhaust side here it was pumping up as the piston was coming up. So uh, I could have probably uh, just taken this side, you know, this side apart. But honestly, it was sitting so long. It was worthwhile just taking it completely apart. So, this is the overhead part. If you don't already know, I didn't take the uh, piston apart or anything. Piston rings off. I usually have uh, a really terrible habit of snapping piston rings. I they're not sealed. I lied. They're both. Oh, they're both not sealed on the back side. They're definitely open. Front side sealed. I guess that's because between the chambers, uh, and I'll show you in a second here, and the crank side. Right there. So they put the seal on the. They put the seal on the front side uh, between the work work area, and then uh, it allows. That's kind of a good idea. That's actually a good idea. Uh, that way it allows the bearing to uh, to get oil into it. There's actually, looks like, you know, uh, a little bit of a pump passage for uh, slapping that oil around in there. Uh, <clears throat> as well as, this probably slops a lot of the oil around as well. So, um, I'm going to start by putting the piston back in the cylinder. I'm gonna just look at the look at the the, the way the 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 rings are offset. You got a you got a oil oil seal and then two uh, cylinder seals or rings, oil ring and two cylinder rings. Um, they're offset far enough, so you want to make sure. Oh, I don't see any. Sometimes there's different, if you look at these, there's passages too, like oil oil passages. I don't see, 
This one does have a hole in the top of the cylinder. And this is a four stroke. Or piston, sorry. Um, you just you get your indentations for uh, front and back, but it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to screw it up in this particular case because I didn't take it I didn't take it. I'm uh, sorry. You just see in the back of my hand. Yay! Jeez. So on the piston, you know they give you some markings for front and back. Uh, to make sure that you have the piston on the right direction. I always make sure that my th These the oil rings should be separated by you know Offset just a little bit not a lot uh, That way you get enough oil passing through here uh, up just underneath the uh, First ring and then the the, the top rings they should be offset 180 degrees uh, From one another as far as where the where the rings uh, set at so these are off just a little bit and yeah, I'm not sure if that's a full hole or if that's just an indentation at the top there uh, <laughs> easy get 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 A little lube goes a long way. So I'm hoping to do this without having to get a spring compressor or a uh, ring compressor, sorry. But today, it does not seem like that's going to be the case. I have one that small. Got it. Good. <laughs> so it's as simple as that then. Uh, I am uh, going to remove my uh, valve keepers and I think to make sure I can get this timing right because the timing's all jacked up. I can already tell. Got the timing all jacked up. And you don't want to bend your you don't want to bend your uh, So the pro tip here would be when you pull this apart, make sure that your crank balance is at the bottom. Uh, and the reason I say that, that way, if I mean if it's never been taken apart before, uh, you should be able to find top dead center no problem. That being said, uh, this I think this was a. Uh, 
course. I'm pretty sure this is a G, yeah, G, this is a GX30, Honda GX31. Um, hopefully you can see that. So if it's never been apart, most likely you're not going to have a timing issue already. But you, when you separate the bottom half, after you get it apart, before you rip the, the piston out, make sure that you have it at top dead center uh, or as close to. That being said, there is a little, there's a little uh, timing window here. And, and although it's very hard to see inside from this perspective, uh, down in the bottom there, you will see a, uh, a red mark, which I'm going to assume is the uh, top dead center spot and uh, hopefully you're on the right side of it. It should be hopefully on the upstroke, I mean the downstroke, uh, opening the uh, exhaust valve as the piston uh, and compressed gases are ignited. So uh, looking in the uh, the cylinders and stuff like that and watching the watching the the uh, lifters go uh, should give you a pretty a pretty good indication of where you're at uh, with that. Now we're gonna keep moving forward with this. <clears throat> um, came back to had to go get some brake cleaning fluid. And uh, what I wanted to go ahead and point out with regards to the timing mark was that after closer inspection, inside this hole, there's a, well, yeah, we're not gonna be able to see it the way I wanna see it. Inside the timing hole, which is where my thumb's at, you'll be able to see, uh, The timing sprocket uh, grooves, and one of the timing sprockets, one of the timing sprockets has a small uh, notch out of it going yeah, good gravy. I initially thought it was uh, the one with the red mark. Let's see if I can rotate this back down. Yeah. Of course it's gonna make me go. Pull spin. I initially thought it was this red mark. But I believe that actually is just a rust mark from where the crank had been sitting for so long. Come on. And I don't know if you can see, you probably can't see it, but there's actually a tooth in here that is, good, I wish I had, God, I wish I had some stronger fingernails, man. Good God. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's this tooth, the second tooth up there has a little bit of a, a notch out of it. What you want to do is you want to get that lined in your sight hole. And here, near timing inspection site. Um, I think it should be good to go. Just make sure that uh, you take note of the 
the notch in your fin, on your crank itself, on the flywheel, and uh, make sure that that is also lined up with the, I'll show you here in a second. Make sure that notch is lined up with the top of your uh, motor. I'm going to clean this up a little bit, put some RTV on it, and hopefully I'll be good to go. Uh, and, and we'll talk about adjusting the valve lash once I get the rest of this together. I was conflicted. I like the Loctite 510, but this is probably more for uh, valve covers and whatnot. Although, in the picture they show, you know, an oil pan, what appears to be an oil pan. It says, high temperature sealant for rigid assemblies. Uh, although, I do like the uh, ultra black uh, RTV. Uh, well, actually, this is uh, Permatex. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll go with the Loctite today, and I guess we'll report back as to whether or not I developed any oil leaks over over the uh, use or life of this uh, unit. So what I did was I took some. You probably see it in the background. Some uh, brake cleaner fluid. Uh, and now I'm just going to apply a very thin coat of uh, sealant to the areas that need the sealant. And then I'll get back to you in a second here. Ah, I always get a little sloppy with my goo. Basically, you really only need it on one side. I put it on both sides. It's going to squirt out and squeeze out. Uh, one area you do need to pay attention to is right here because uh, that is an oil passage uh, And you don't want to block that up when I pulled it apart. It was kind of blocked up to begin with which Whatever um, They had like I said it was RTV in here. I'm going to use uh, the Loctite gasket uh, Eliminator I mean, you know these are seals in this spot right here anyways uh, You probably don't really need to RTV in there or put any Gasket sealer in there. What I would say is that uh, You know if you can and you got the time and the skill maybe cut out a uh, a Cork one or whatever Whatever floats your boat So I'm gonna reassemble this now And we'll uh, get back to you So I did get it all back together here. Uh, the uh, the valve adjustments were kind of a little bit of a challenging thing. <clears throat> uh, so long as you have it at top dead center, and I'm sorry I don't see I don't see a size on this uh, Allen key, but I'll get my get my chart out here in a minute. Uh, but there are keepers here. Uh, they are eight millimeter uh, nuts as well. Pretty much every this this machine <laughs> this machine will come apart. This motor will come apart with eight, seven, nine millimeter sockets. I don't think there. And then there's the uh, the primary because I you know you got you have to you have to take the uh, the clutch. Uh, I, you know, it, depending on what kind of machine you have, you may have just a crankshaft coming out here. Uh, in my case, this was off a uh, a tiller, so it was like a, a centrifugal force clutch, spring uh, spring clutch. Um, the uh, the object is once it's at top dead center, and and you know this because like I I, I pointed out previously, uh, there's a notch right here. And then and in the inspection hole on the side here, and I know that 
it's very hard, very difficult to see, but you will see a, uh, like a notched tooth on that flywheel, uh, or timing, uh, mechanism that they have in there. And, uh, I put my, uh, ignition coil back on here and I'm going to just, Hey, I, I, you know, it's not filled with oil, so you don't want to get too crazy with this, but I just wanted to make sure, sure that I had compression. So I just wanted to quickly, uh, go over this one more time. Uh, top dead center can be determined by, uh, placing that notched fin in line with this, uh, protrusion from the aluminum, uh, head there. The, uh, valving, valve timing can be, uh, checked through this sight hole here. There's a, a Phillips head, uh, screw that is in there and what you'll be looking for is a notched tooth and I and I apologize I kind of was in a hurry with this and, um, but I, I also wanted to make sure that I had spark and uh, everything else no I do not have oil on this I don't recommend that you do it but just to show that I had a uh, uh, compression and ignition and that it's going to run. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty content with that. I'll let the uh, sealant, gasket sealant, seal up overnight and hopefully tomorrow I'll have this back in the machine.